Josette and I'm one of the lorikeet keepers here at the Erie Zoo and today I'm excited to take you into the aviary so that you can see what it's like to be a lorikeet keeper. So rainbow lorikeets is a general term given to the various types of lorikeets that can be found. We do have 11 individuals here at the Erie Zoo. Most of them are coconut lorikeets such as this fella here. We also have a red lorikeet, Pat, who's hanging out on my shoulder. And then hanging out on the railing over there is a Forston lorikeet. These guys are found in northern and eastern parts of Australia where they're found more in the rainforest and more of the coastal areas where there's a lot of woodlands for them to nest in. And these guys can also be found in Papua New Guinea. And they're, they have been introduced into the western part of Australia through the release of individuals that have gotten out of the pet train. So these guys are a species that are of least concern as these guys are actually considered a pest in some areas. All right, so what we're gonna do now is prep our diet for the lorikeets. Now here at the zoo, they do get a bit of a variety of fruit and just a little bit of vegetables. Um, we also give them nectar, which is something that they would eat in the wild. So we do have pieces of honeydew, and what we'll do is we'll cut it up into chunks. We have apples that we'll cut in half for them. And then we do have bananas. Because we leave the peels on for the bananas, we do our best to take the stickers off of them, just like we do our boxes of enrichment. And then we'll cut our bananas in half so it's a little bit easier for the birds to get to. As a treat, we do have corn for them. This is not something they get every day. They get it about once every couple weeks. Other items include strawberries, um, hibiscus flowers. We'll also give them a little bit of acorn squash to chew on to help keep their beaks a little bit trim. So in the wild lorikeets, they're a type of nectar feeder. Um, they actually have a specialized tongue where their tongue ends in little hair-like bristles that help them pick up nectar and pollen off of various flowers. They will also eat from various fruits that they would find in their native habitat. And as they would do that, they would might ingest a little bit of seeds, which helps them to help spread the seeds around to help more plants grow. Um, here at the zoo, we do have these fruits and veggies that you see on the plates here to try to help replicate what they would find in the wild and we're also going to make some nectar for them. All right, so we're going to go ahead and make the nectar now. We do also have some bird vitamins here to help make sure that they're getting everything that their body needs. Once we've added our water and our nectar, we give it a really good stir with our whisk. Rainbow lorikeets are considered a parrotlet, which is a small parrot. And because these guys are part of the parrot family, they are quite intelligent. These guys can learn various um, behaviors and they can even learn how to talk. Some of our guys do know how to say pretty bird, but most of the part they do like to mimic various types of whistles and they can even mimic a couple of the bird, the native birds that are found in our area, such as the robins. Um, these guys can live to be about 10 to 20 years old, and so they are a pet that do require a bit of commitment. And again, because of that intelligence, they can get bored pretty easily. So they're a bird that you do want to provide a lot of enrichment for. Alright guys, so we're going to talk a little bit about the enrichment for our lorikeets. Our lorikeets do get a variety of enrichment. Um, today happens to be a paper product day, so we have some paper bags, some paper boxes, we also have a regular box and a roll of streamer that we're gonna give them today. So we're gonna open up some of the bags here and we're gonna stuff them with straw. The birds love to shred these. They just love tearing things apart with their beaks. And often when we do a box with straw in it, sometimes you'll even see a little bit of a nesting behavior from some of our more dominant pairs. Now sometimes when we prep these bags and boxes with straw in them, we'll also hide different types of foods in them. So that way the birds kind of get a nice little treat as they rip everything apart. 
kind of helps encourage them to explore new items as we introduce them throughout the year. So another form of enrichment we do have for the birds is painting. So our birds aren't trained to pick up a paintbrush and paint, but they do like to run through it, leave little footprints, and in doing so they get a bit of nectar as a reward. Now the paint that we use is a tempura paint that is washable and non-toxic, so it is safe for all of our animals here at the zoo. All right guys, as you can see, our lorikeets made some wonderful artwork today. We got a lot of beautiful little footprints in blue and purple. And wonderful artworks like these, you can actually purchase during our art shows that we have every year. So rainbow lorikeets are a species that are monogamous, meaning that male and females do pair up for life. Um, we do have a few pairs here at the zoo, and you can often tell that they're a bonded pair because they'll often be grooming each other, pruning their feathers. They do have a bit of a courtship dance that they do where the male will kind of approach the female and he'll bob his head up and down and make little uh, hi slight hissing noises at her. And he'll kind of sway back and forth and just kind of chirp to her a little bit. And he'll, he may even try to offer her some food. And if she accepts the food, the, it helps reinforce the bond they, that they have. And these guys are cavity nesters, meaning that when they have a nest, it's in the cavity of trees, whether it's one that they eventually chew out themselves or one that's been left behind by a, either another bird species or even a mammalian species. These guys can have upwards of four eggs in a clutch and they can have multiple clutches in a year. And the male and female do take turns uh, incubating the eggs, feeding the offspring. Sometimes the male will even bring food to the female so she doesn't have to leave the nest. So he'll actually feed her and the offspring at the same time. So working with the rainbow lorikeets, they're one of my favorite species to work with here at the zoo. Not only are they just beautiful to look at with all their different colors, but they just have a wide variety of personalities. We have one that's a little bit shy. We have a pair that are generally the grumpy ones of the group. Um, most of them are very, very curious. They're always willing to check out new things. They're always going through your hair, checking to see if you got anything in your pockets. Um, these guys, they make a variety of sounds. Some of them do talk. Some of them do say pretty bird. One of them sounds very human-like and one of them just sounds very strange, almost hard to tell apart but these guys are just smart and they're just fun and they are just very energetic to work with. Thank you for joining us for What's Moo at the Zoo and thank you to Chick-fil-A for making these videos possible. If you'd like to help support our lorikeets and the Erie Zoo during this time, please make sure to visit our website at www.eriezoo.org. Thank you.